Hello everyone, this is DA from e Academy, and today we are going to solve a linear programming problem with the simplex method that was briefly discussed in the previous video, so let's start with the problem. So here we are with the same problem that was discussed in the video of the graphical method. So I'm taking this problem again so as to make a complete connection uh, between the simplex method and the graphical method and uh, in the concept basis of the simplex method. So here we are, we have the ob objectives to maximize z that is 2x plus 3y and we have four constraints x plus 2y less than 30, 3x plus y is less than or equal to 60, 6x plus 3y less than or equal to 200 and so on. So the 30, 60, 200 and 200 are the limit of the available resources and now the x plus 2y, 3x plus y, 6x plus 3y, and these all the things are the limit on the usage of the resources. So again this side is for the limit on the availability of the resources and this, this side is for the usage of the limited resources by the variables. Now for the simplex form, for uh, using the simplex method we have to write this problem into the standard form. Now we can write the standard form of this. So the first method in order to make it the standard form is that looking at the inequality and that inequality sign that is less than or equal to and all of the constraints having the same sign. So in the previous video we have talked about how we can add the slack variable and the surplus variable in the constraint in order to make an inequality form. So here I am adding the slack variable everywhere and making it the constraint in the equality form. Also I am using zero coefficient with all of the slack variables in the objective function. So this is the standard form. So this is the standard form of this problem and here all of the slack variables are also positive so for all si's are greater than or equal to zero where i is one two four. And also, x and y is also positive. So x and y are the variables that was physically understandable when talking about a problem, when solving a problem. So s1, s2, s3, and s4 are the variables, but different variables. So we are seeing s1 to s4 are the variables that are basic variables and x and y are the variables that are known basic variables. So what is the definition that makes s1 to s4 the basic variables and x and y are the known basic variables? The definition is, is a variable is said to be basic variable if it has a unit coefficient in one constraint and zero coefficient in all of the other constraints. So s1 having a unit coefficient in this constraint and zero coefficient in all of the other constraints and same case for s2 and s3 s4 but for when we're talking about x it has a unit coefficient here but not a zero coefficient in any of the other constraints that is why s1 to s4 are the basic variables and x and y are the non-basic variables so now the second step is making the initial table using this information so this is the initial table here we have the coefficient of the basic variables that are in the objective function s1, s2, s3, and s4 having zero coefficient in the objective function, bv representing the basic variables, so we have four basic variables. cj is for the coefficient of the variables that we have in the objective function, so x is the variable having coefficient 2, y is the variable having coefficient 3, and s1, s2, s3 having variable 0. And this one representing 1, 2, 3, 4 representing the four coefficients uh, for constraints. So in the first constraint, the coefficient of x was 1, the coefficient of y was 2, s1 was 1, s2, s3 is for all 0, and this solution representing the right hand side of the constraint that is the limit on the available resources. So these are the first constraint having the 30, 60, 200, and 200, and so on, the coefficients according to the constraints. Now we have to apply the algorithm of simplex method to find the object, the objective. So the very first thing is to find cj, that is mathematical multiplying the cbi's, that is the coefficient of the basic variables 
with the updated coefficients of the known basic variables and the constraints. So the formula of the ZJ is summation of the multiplication of CBIs and CJ. That is, this is CBI, so 0 with multiply with 1, plus 0 multiply with 3, plus 0 multiply with 6, plus 0 multiply with 5. So these are, all of the CBRs are 0. So that is why ZJ, the summation of all of the 0 must also be equal to 0 at this stage for the X, for Y, for S1, for S2 and S3 and so on because these all CBIs are 0. So that is why ZJ for all of this are also 0. And now the next step is making a difference of ZJ and CJ. So ZJ is 0 and CJ is 2. So 0 minus 2 we get minus 2, 0 minus 3 we get minus 3, 0 minus 0 we get 0, 0 minus 0 we get 0, 0 minus 0 we get 0, and 0 minus 0 we get 0 here. So we have to pick the least one from zj minus cj. The least one is minus 3. Why we, we are selecting the least one? Because Physically, it is depicting the desired profit or loss, whatever in the objective function, because our objective function is to maximize the profit. So, and zj minus cj is optimal when all values are either positive or zero. For example, for example, if I invested one thousand dollars and the output that I got is of eleven hundred dollars, so I am, I'm in a profit of one hundred dollars. If the output is of one thousand dollars, is that equal to the what as uh, what is equal to that investment so there is no loss so we are still okay with it but if the situation is that we are having uh, the output is of nine hundred dollars then we are making a loss in our in our way there is a loss so that there is that is why we have to pick the most negative values of zj minus cj in order to maximize the profit that is our objective function so again, the negative value, the most negative value is minus 3. So that uh, depicting y, that is the variable. So from here, we, we realize that what variable is going to uh, in the basic variable sides and which variable, basic variable will have to eliminate. So here we have selected the column. Now it's time to select the row. How we can select the row? by figure out the ratio 30 and the corresponding value in the selected column is 2 so we can figure out the ratio by dividing it it's 30 divided by 2 we get 15 and then 60 divided by 1 we get 60 and 200 divided by 3 we get 66.67 and then 200 divided by 4 we get 50 So now it's time for for making a physical interpretation of the ratio here and the ratio is just simply just simply the x and y intercepts it is just x or y intercepts as we have discussed in the graphical method depending upon which column is selected either x or y here we have uh, with the y we selected y column so you, you can also check it by yourself or you can watch a video of graphical method whose thing will be in the description so here from ratio we have to pick the smallest positive value because it's it's an attempt to be in the feasible region so the smallest value is 15 so the row that is selected now is of s1 so now we have the basic variable that is selected is s1 and the known basic variable that is selected is y and now 2 the 2 is in the intersection of this column and row and 2 is said to be now the pivot key in this and it's time to make the first iteration now because we have selected the row we have selected the column we know what is which variable is selected on which uh, which variable is selected from here side non basic variable which variable selected from the from the basic variable side and what is now the pivot key so now it's time to make the first iteration and there are a, there is a formula for making the values in a cycle now in the first iteration 
because y is selected and s1 is selected so y is in now s1 place in the basic variable side and here now we have to rewrite the values by using a formula and the formula is different for the selected row and on other the remaining rows so while talking about the selected row that was of s1 1 2 1 0 0 0 30 this is the selected row the values that we have to write it here as dividing every element dividing every entry by the pivot key so the pivot key is 2 so 1 divided by 2 for x here should be 1 by 2 for y 2 so 1 divided by 2 here 1 by 2 and again again uh, 2 divided by 2 we get 1 for s1 1 divided by 2 1 by 2 0 divided by 2 we get 0 and for s3 and s4 the same and 30 divided by 2 will be 15 and the formula for the remaining values for the remaining table or the for the remaining rows is this new value is equal to old value minus corresponding column value multiplied by the corresponding row value sorry that was a row value and this is the column value divided by the pivot key here what is the old value because I'm looking for this value x s2 so the old value was 3 so this is old value 3 minus the corresponding row value the corresponding row what is the row this is the row so the corresponding row is 1 here multiply by the corresponding column value column value is this this is the column that is selected so this is 1 and divided by the pivot key the pivot key is 2 so this is 3 minus 1 by 2 that is 3 by 2 and then for y is 2 this is s2 and this is 1 so the old value is 1 minus the corresponding row value row value is 2 corresponding column value is same as 1 divided by the pivot key that is 2 so this is 1 minus 2 by 2 that is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 now moving toward this old value is 0 minus corresponding row value that is 1 multiplied by cor corresponding column value that is 1 divided by 2 so this is minus 1 by 2 sorry their value were 5 by 2 not 3 by 2 so 5 by 2 0 minus 1 by 2 and similarly moving in the same direction we have 1 for the next and then we have 0 and then we have 0 and this is 45 yes so using this formula we can figure out the values of these two rows as well so now it's time to figure out zj by using this formula so here we have to multiply cbi with the cj so there cbi multiply with this 3 multiply 1 by 2 we get 3 by 2 plus 0 multiply 5 by 2 we get 0 plus 0 multiply with this we get 0 and this so here zj is 3 by 2 and then for the next is 3 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 then for the next is 3 by 2 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 that's 3 by 2 in the same case 0 0 0 0 this is 0 the next is also 0 and this is 15 multiplied by 3 is 45 then all 0 so here yeah. the next step is to figure out zj minus cj zj is 3 by 2 and cj is 2 so 3 by 2 minus 2 we get minus 1 by 2 3 minus 3 we get 0 the next is 3 by 2 minus 0 we get 3 by 2 0 minus 0 0 minus 0 0 minus 0 so here 0 in a row so as per the algorithm we have to select the most negative from the zj minus cj so here the negative is on the minus 1 by 2 from the x so the selected column is for the x now we have to figure out the ratio in order to figure out what is the corresponding row now uh, that which of the basic variable is have to be eliminated and x is going in the place of this so 15 divided by 1 by 2 we get 30 then 45 divided by divided by 5 by 2 we get 18 and 155 divided by 9 by 2 we get 34 Point four and 140 divided by 3 we get 46.67 now we have to select the minimum from the ratio the minimum is 18 
So the basic variable that is selected and that it have to be eliminate is S2. So here the pivot key is 5 by 2. This is the pivot row. Now it's time for making the next iteration. As X was selected in place of S2, so that is why here in the basic variable S2 is eliminated and now we have X with its coefficient 2. So again we have to find the values of um, in, in the inner side of the table finding the values of the rows and we know there are two formulas the very first formula for the for the selected row that is dividing every element with the pivot key so we will make the values of x first this row first and then we'll figure out the values of y this row s3 row and s4 row with the help of the formula that old value uh, minus this this formula is the old value minus the corresponding row value minus corresponding column value divided by the pivot key so by the f using formula we can figure out the values here so the values are so now it's time to figure out zj 3 multiplied by 0 plus 2 multiplied by 1 plus 0 multiplied by 0 plus 0 multiplied by 0 so we are with the value 2 here in the zj similarly 3 multiplied by 1 plus 2 multiplied by 0 plus 0 multiplied by 0 plus 0 multiplied by 0 we are having value 3 here then 3 multiplied by 3 by 5 plus 2 minus 1 2 multiplied by minus 1 by 5 and this 0 we get a minus and this is 7 by 5 here so again for this is 1 by 5 and the next 2 are 0 and this is 54 and now it's, fig it's time to figure out zj minus cj here so 2 minus 2 is 0 3 minus 3 is 0 7 by 5 minus 0 we get 7 by 5 as it is and this is also because here is, is 0 and this is 0, 0. Now zj minus cj is all positive or 0. So there is not any negative value in this zj minus cj side. So this imp so now we are in a feasible region. We have, uh, we have to terminate this. And we can make the final decision here. That the value, that what is the maximum number of profit that we are gaining is this is this 54 so the maximum z is 54 here what is the value of x and y with this 54 so the value of x is this 6 and the value of uh, value y 6 and the value of x is 18 so with with x is equal to 18 and y is equal to 6 so we're plugging this values of x and y in the objective function we'll get z and this is the desired answer so this is how we can solve any linear programming problem with the help of the simplex method by using the formulas and by by having a physical interpretation in our mind so this is for now looking for most of the videos and you can subscribe to this channel to watch for upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye